All right, so thank you for coming out to my talk today. Uh, my name is Mike Barcom, and I'm going to be presenting about gamifying Moodle for extracurricular speaking opportunities. So I'm a PhD student and also a business owner. I teach uh, students in Japan. And so this is kind of my two passions coming together at once. So uh, the objectives for the talk, so I'm going to review relevant literature um, about interaction with a foreign or second language, uh, extracurricular learning, and video games in pedagogical settings. So what we're going to look at is the first plugin is Poodle. And so this is a language recorder that can be uh, embedded throughout um, Moodle. So I'm going to look at the different uses of that to create the speaking opportunities. And then we're going to look at how we can gamify these opportunities to motivate students uh, to engage in the speaking uh, opportunities. So I think a lot of people may be familiar with both of these plugins. But we're going to look at uh, kind of how they can complement each other. So, uh, creating interaction with a second language is really important, and it's up to the teacher to provide these opportunities, especially in the foreign language setting, where they might not have opportunities to speak outside a class. So how can you, um, the, the, the main goal is to challenge learners in a way that they're not going to be bored, it's not too easy, or it's not so difficult that they feel overwhelmed and they're going to give up. So we have to hit at that right level. and. Uh, it's important to extend these opportunities outside of class, and most teachers try to do this through the use of a book, which offers limited interaction. And so another problem with wanting to extend the classroom for speaking opportunities is that um, pronunciation anxiety is a, is a major factor. Uh, and this prevents people from speaking in class because they don't want to lose face in front of their peers. So this is another reason that we want to get students uh, in a comfortable setting. And uh, computers can specifically help in this, so we're going to look at how they can enhance interactions, uh, specifically speaking, and some focus on listening. So games and learning. Um, so a lot of people might be familiar with video games and learning, so there's been a lot of news recently about um, students who may uh, learn a foreign language by playing a, a World of Warcraft or a game like this. And so that's a commercial game, but it's not specifically designed for learning. Um, so, while students can learn during that, uh, we might want to make the game so it has a specific pedagogical purpose. And so that's where serious games and serious simulations come in. We still maintain the game element, but now it's, it's been designed specifically for, for a pedagogical purpose. So we're going to be looking at uh, speaking and listening in a second language uh, specifically today. So that's still including the game element, though. And it may be beyond many of our resources to, to develop a game. Um, so we're going to look at gamification, which is removing the actual game, and we're going to look specifically at uh, the pe a normal pedagogical activity, but including some of the elements like leaderboards and badges. And so I had mentioned that some students learn on their own. So this is extramural learning, uh, where they may go out on their own, completely independent of a pedagogical context, and learn something. But it's very uncommon, so we can't expect this of our students. So instead of focusing on uh, extramural language, uh, Sylvan and Sunquist 2017 also talk about extracurricular language, which is the extension of a classroom. So it's not just um, you're, you're on your own to learn, you actually have some guidance by a teacher and by the course materials. So when you leave class, you can continue the language learning and uh, possibly with other students in the class in kind of that game-like way that you would hope for. And so this opens up opportunity to, opportunities to gamify out-of-class materials um, in the flipped classroom setting, so students can practice out and come into class. So why Moodle? Why, why would we want to use Moodle to do this? So Moodle's particularly effective uh, if used to encourage interaction among connected knowers, uh, particularly in forms. And that's what we're going to talk about quite a bit, is how can we get that interaction between the learners in the forms. And it's critical to, to show and model uh, target activities and behaviors in the classroom. And so again, this is another reason why we want to extend uh, into the, into the out-of-class setting. Uh, so Moodle enables teachers to create through customization. And this is a really important point, because at non-Moodle conferences, when I, when I present my research, I always get the same question, how long have you been programming? And I always have to explain, well, I, I'm not a programmer. 
And I think that that's a major draw to Moodle is that we can, we can create these highly effective materials without actually having to program. And so if we look at how Moodle can be gamified, there's progressive learning through maps and levels, which can be done through themes, labels, and conditions to access. We have socialization through chats and forms, which we'll be focusing on. Instant feedback and the, th the, the fact that things can unlock and happen instantly is highly persuasive. And then reward systems through gamified plugins. So specifically, we're going to look at forms, uh, the gamified plugins, and, and the role of instant feedback. So the guiding questions are how can Moodle uh, be equipped with level up to motivate students to engage in speaking opportunities, and how can, it afford, uh, how can Poodle afford users opportunities to speak with other students out of class? So Poodle. Um, so we're going to look at the use of Poodle, uh, the audio and the video recording. There are other things it does, but we'll be focusing on those two. So this is a typical form where maybe we would have students go and ask and answer questions. Um, basic, uh, just text, uh, ask and answer. But we can add Poodle to that. So instead of sending a text message, we send, uh, we send a video message. Uh, and this can enable students to interact with each other within a video form. Um, where they can have a conversation out of class, and then when they come into class, we can scaffold them up because they've already had that practice with each other before, and it's asynchronous. So if they make a mistake, they can delete and start over again. And this is very important for beginning learners because, again, they don't want to be losing face in front of their peers. So. Um, Adding Poodle to pages, so it's not just forms, you can add it to pages where this is a brief grammar lesson, and instead of just reading, uh, you can have the audio equipped with it. And then maybe the students would participate in a form and ask and answer the questions that they had just practiced in the grammar lesson. Um, another way to add it is for books. So maybe we might want to have students do a reading course. Uh, this is with younger children in this image. And so uh, it's myself reading the book, and then the students practice reading along with the book. And then in the form, they, ha they read the books to each other. And then in the lessons, finally, in the synchronous live setting, after they've rehearsed several times, they have the opportunity uh, to, to read the book to each other. And so another way, maybe we don't want student-to-student -student interaction. Maybe as a teacher, I want to provide some more uh, specific feedback and just uh, maybe a more comfortable setting for the student where they're not exposing their, their second language speech to all the other users in the course. Um, so with the speaking quizzes, I could either record myself asking a question and the students record their answer, or I could type it and they could read and then they can speak to answer it. And so this is a brief example of a Poodle quiz. And so Poodle's quite dynamic in what we can do with it. There are a lot of different opportunities that students can have to practice speaking. And so now comes the part where we need to motivate students to try that. How do we motivate them to engage in these activities that we've built? So Level Up is a plugin. Uh, it's in the form of a block, and it gives you a lot of options to, to focus student attention towards specific um, uh, resources in the course. So um, the course rules, it allows you to set uh, seemingly an endless list of actions that you can award points for. And so it's, this is the really important point, because you decide what's worth the most in this course. Uh, and it's really important to do that because the students are going to pay the most attention to what's worth the most points. Um, and so you determine the interval, how much, what gets the most points, speaking, grammar, vocabulary, uh, whatever it may be. And then how many points before you get to the next level? Is it weeks where you, you, know, you have to study for a long time before you get to that next level? Or is it maybe a couple days? And depending on the population, these are instructional design options you're going to have to make. For some learners, it might be fine. For some, you may discourage them, and you don't want to, to uh, have them feel defeated at the beginning of a learning experience. So maybe a more quicker reward system is really important. Um, so plan carefully, and please refer to research before setting those rules. Um, and so when you actually set the rules, they're added one at a time. And uh, in this example, the points are allocated. Uh, there are three points for the uh, grammar activities and 10 points for speaking. So I want to guide the students towards speaking. So they're going to get 10 points uh, for sending video messages in the forums versus three points for the grammar vocabulary activities. Um, and so that's, uh, that's kind of how you set that up. So it's really important to, to have that. Uh, there has to be intent behind those rules. You can't just arbitrarily uh, make those. 
it'll <laughs> cause major problems. Um, okay, so visuals. So it comes stock with stars. And if maybe you're working with younger children, you might want to change these. Maybe you're doing an aquatic theme and you may do different types of fish or marine uh, creatures. Um, there are different ways to do this depending on your audience. But the visuals that come with it as you level up from star one to star two, uh, they're quite appealing. So um, we've actually kept those in our courses. Um, Importantly, there's a cheat guard. So you may get students who just want to be at the top of the leaderboard, so they just click things over and over again. Um, and so you can set the cheat guard. Uh, maybe the activities, some like the vocab cards, are brief, so they only need to spend a few minutes on them. And uh, you, you just want to prevent people from constantly clicking. That's the, the main goal with the cheat guard. So you'll have to experiment, um, again, depending on your population. And you can kind of look at the logs and get a feel for what's going on. Um, and this takes some time to develop. But it's uh, really important to be aware of all of these features. All right, and so once you're done, you have, uh, this is the, the fruits of your labor is your ladder. Uh, so you have the student rank, uh, what level they're at, their image, and then uh, the progress to the next level. And this is available, you can make this private, uh, this one's public so the students can see each other. And so some building tips. So be sure the students know how much the activities are worth. If you look in this example, you can see that the points are at the end of each activity, how much they're worth. And this will help them to develop strategies uh, to use the course, not just uh, it, it doesn't mean as much if they don't know what's worth the points, so they can't develop the specific strategies to engage in the competition, which is one of the key points of, of gamification, is to encourage that friendly competition. And um, it's to reset, the, another important point is to reset the leaderboard. So if you just let it keep going, you'll find that you'll have uh, students either perpetually at the bottom or the top, and that's not really a good space for learning. Uh, if you reset it, I find that once a month is a good amount of time, and it, again, it encourages that, that type of competition we want. And it's important to remember that these points don't represent grades. These are merely effort points. So if we're doing our job as teachers and instructional designers and getting that material correct from the, from the start, um, then if they practice it and do their part, then the learning uh, should happen from there. So another point to consider is what do these points mean after the fact? Say I delete them at once a month. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> I just had these points and now they're gone. And so something we started working with are avatars in the form of the profile picture. So students can exchange points, smaller uh, accessories, uh, so 50 points for the eyes and related accessories and 75 points for clothes and boots. Um, the background images, students are <laughs> really interested in these. And so they can exchange points for the basic background uh, for 100 points or 150 for the more fancy background. And it seems simple, but these kind of serve as a, as a rich metacognitive activity, not just, oh, I had these points and now they're gone, but as they look at the robot, there's some connection to the amount of work they've done to get to that point. And I think that anything like that is really encouraging in language learning, where you can often feel like, God, I'm just still not good at this, but actually you've developed quite a bit. So objectives revisited. So we want to create that interaction outside of class, inside of class too. Um, but I find that outside of class is, is, is a great way to start and that that'll help pick up whether it's a webcam lesson or an in-person lesson when you're at that live uh, synchronous communication, that, that, that that'll be really helpful at that point. And so now we know the different ways that you can use Poodle and how you can leverage gamification to motivate people. So in conclusion, uh, we want to focus on helping learners to interact with the target language out of class, um, either with other students or individually, and we want to gamify to motivate students uh, to do the activities we deem to be most important, and ensure that the points are meaningful to the students uh, beyond the immediate activities that they're doing. So what, what's the long term, what do these points mean to them in the uh, long term? So thank you very much. Sorry, I can't go back. <laughs> there we go. Questions? Sure.
So the, the question is, what did we use for the avatar customization? So yeah, we're just doing it um, off, off of Moodle, uh, just some basic uh, Adobe type stuff, so. Yes, yep, so the students send in the points and then we will go and manually put them together and put their, put their profile pictures together. Sorry, yeah, me too. <laughs> Sure. Uh, no, so uh, in terms of privacy and the rankings, um, you can set it uh, so either students can see kind of all the information or only their own. Um, yeah, it's not possible to keep the points but remove the names. But I'm always uh, in touch with the, the uh, designer of this plugin and he's always updating stuff so I'm sure if you email him he'll appreciate it. Yeah. All right, thank you so much.